Hey Space Invaders, I recently watched a video by Dr. Becky where she explains the five different ways that she uses coding in her research as an astrophysicist. I thought it might be a good idea to also give my own perspective on how I use coding as an astronomy graduate student. First I wanted to point out that Dr. Becky's video gives a really good two minute explanation on what coding is and why it's important. She basically talks about how code is a language that we use to communicate with computers and tell them what to do. She goes on to explain how this is important because computers are so much more efficient at handling data than we are as humans, and they can compute or do calculations in fractions of the time that it takes humans to do those calculations. As many of us know, one of the most useful programming languages available is Python, and this is because of its versatility and user friendliness. When I use coding in my research, most of the time I am using Python directly. And what I mean by directly is that I'm actually scripting uh, code in the Python language. Sometimes, however, I might use Python indirectly. And what I mean by indirectly is that I might be using a software that was written by somebody else, but is based on Python language, or it might be based on Python and C or C++ or any combination of these different languages that are available. I also use a little bit of Linux in my research, and Linux is an operating system software that I believe is written in C. Linux is really useful because it allows me to combine different pieces of software on my computer, and so I can, I can manipulate things on my system. I can run different pieces of software, um, manipulate files in between, and put this all in a script that runs all at one time, so I don't have to personally keep going and um, calling different functions each time I want to run something. Now, the main types of things that I use coding for in my research are not that different from what was mentioned in Dr. Becky's video. These include data uh, processing, data analysis, and data visualization. Since I mostly use Python directly, I thought that in this video I'd also just mention some of the packages that I tend to use for these different tasks. If y'all want me to do a video elaborating on any of the packages I mentioned, or maybe doing an example of using them, just let me know in the comment section. So when I first get my hands on some data, uh, whether it's two-dimensional or three-dimensional image data, or maybe a collection of sources from a astronomical survey, or a collection of sources from a large-scale simulation, um, there's going to be pieces of that data that I don't want to include in my scientific analysis. For the image data, this might be background signal or signal from the instrument itself that was used to collect the data. And for these table of sources, this might be sources that are not relevant to the science question that I'm asking. Either way, I need to be able to remove that data from the rest of the data in order to use what's remaining as a tool in, in answering a science question. This data processing task allows me to basically convert raw data into something that's usable uh, for whatever purpose I need it in, in my research. For processing images, I have taken classes in graduate school where we were taught how to use coding in order to process image data. But for the most part, in my own research, I've been using software that was written by somebody else in order to process specific data from a specific instrument. This is because there's really no point in reinventing the wheel. Science should be a collaborative process and we should all be contributing to the knowledge and using what's already there instead of trying to recreate everything ourselves. So for example, a lot of times I use data from the Apache Point uh, Observatory's three and a half meter telescope. The instrument that I use is called DIS. It stands for Dual Imaging Spectrograph and it's a long slit spectrograph on the three and a half meter telescope. When I need to process data that I've collected from this instrument, I use a software that's been created that's called PyDIS, P-Y-D-I-S. As you can guess, it's a Python-based software used to handle DIS data. For surveys or large-scale simulation data, I use Python directly and rely on packages like NumPy and Matplotlib. NumPy allows me to perform calculations on the data set and determine which sources I can throw out based on the different parameters available to that data set. This might involve taking multiple parameters from the data set and using NumPy to combine them in some fashion and using that combination of information as a threshold or a cut to determine which sources in the data set that I, I want to get rid of. Matplotlib allows me to visualize the data that I want to keep or don't want to keep in different parameter spaces. Usually when I'm using Matplotlib in this fashion, I am taking um, the selection criteria that I've put together using NumPy and displaying it so I can get a better idea of what data I am keeping and what I'm not. And if data is clumping together in certain parts of parameter space, or if I'm making a bad decision with the cutoffs that I'm making, things like that. 
After processing the data, I use coding to analyze it. For imaging data of specific astronomical sources like galaxies, this could involve quantifying certain properties about those sources, such as how bright they are at different locations, or what they look like physically, and by physically I'm talking about their morphology. This information can come from the data directly, so I can actually take the individual values of the data and use that to quantify something about the data, or alternatively, I can fit a model to the data and use the best fitting model to infer those properties that I'm interested in. There are many Python packages that I can use to do these analyses. Once again, NumPy is extremely useful here because it allows me to perform calculations on multi-dimensional arrays. Another package I use is called AstroPy, which is used for exactly what it sounds like. It's used to do astronomy analyses in Python. AstroPy has functionality for reading and writing um, image data, measuring properties directly from the data, or creating models to fit the data, and so many other things that you can do in astronomy. Two other packages I use a lot are FoatUtils and SciPy. FoatUtils is used for detecting sources in image data and measuring certain properties about those sources. SciPy can be used for higher mathematical operations such as linear algebra algebraic operations, integrations, interpolations, and so many other things. So these are really useful um, for basically scientific analysis of data. These are the four packages that I tend to use most often. They are usually the ones that I read in to any code I write right away because I know that I'm gonna use them at some point. And so just to reiterate, those are NumPy, AstroPy, FoatUtils, and SciPy. Lastly, a super important use of coding is being able to visualize your data and the information. Visualization is really important because it can help you better understand the information that you have, or it can help you debug the analysis you're performing. It's also a really great way to present information, not only to yourself, but to your collaborators so that everyone can understand exactly what you're doing or what you're dealing with. To visualize my data in Python, I use the previously mentioned package matplotlib. This can help me display different images of astronomical sources, or maybe the models that I'm trying to fit to these sources. Matplotlib has functionality to display your data in very various different ways. For example, you can stretch the scalings for how you're mapping array data to an actual image. You can also plot relationships between different parameters in log space, which is really important in astronomy because things are really big and we like to be able to fit information about all of the things onto one plot. And so log space is something that comes up a lot in plotting different parameters or relationships in astronomy. Another functionality is that you can plot multiple parameters, say three parameters in 3D space. And this allows you to maybe look at parameter planes instead of just relationships between two parameters or information about one parameter. I wanted to keep this video relatively short, so I'm gonna end it here. And hopefully you guys will let me know if you need me to elaborate on anything. But I just wanted to reiterate that no matter what language you're using, coding is an invaluable tool to conduct research in any field of science, and it can be used for so many more things than what I've talked about here today. If you're interested in learning more about Python and how you can use it to answer your own scientific questions or solve problems, I'm going to be leaving some useful links in the description section that basically just go over what Python is, how you can download it and set it up on your computer, and how you can start learning it so that you can utilize it for yourself. Let me know if you guys thought this video was useful, and thanks everyone for watching.